I've been getting lots of emails and comments from people who want to know which backtesting framework they should learn first in Python. And so I thought I'd share my experience of the two biggest frameworks currently available, that being Backtrader and VectorBT. So we'll start off with a bit of history. Backtrader was first published by Mementum, aka Daniel Rodriguez, back in about 2015. And for the time, it had one of the most complete feature sets of any easily and freely available Python backtesting framework, especially given how easy it was to quickly get up and running with your strategies and iterate through different combinations. Unfortunately, active development stopped in about 2018 and the library is no longer being maintained by the original author. Some members of the community have taken it upon themselves to maintain a fork of Backtrader. I believe the most active is Backtrader 2. But ultimately, no new features are currently being added to this fork. About the same time that Backtrader was starting to wind down development, Pola Kowo, aka Oleg, was publishing the first few versions of what would become the VectorBT library that we know and love today. Here in 2022, Oleg's still hard at work building out the VectorBT ecosystem, although he's largely focused on the pro version of VectorBT, and I'll talk a bit more about the differences between the pro version and the free version a little bit later on. So right now, there's a little bit of a power struggle going on between the two libraries. There's the old and tried and tested Backtrader versus the new and upcoming VectorBT. So let's get into the pros and cons of each library. We'll start with Backtrader. Now the main benefit of using Backtrader is its ease of use, especially if you're migrating from a proprietary trading platform like TradeStation or Think or Swim you'll find the layout is very, very similar. To get started, you basically just define a strategy class with your trading logic, almost exactly how it is on those platforms, that even the syntax is quite similar, and you're ready to go with your first few backtests. It's all very intuitive. You define your logic. It's event-driven. It feeds the bars in one at a time until it runs out of data. And so it's very easy to implement trading logic because you can implement it just as if you're there, right there in that moment. Another great thing about Backtrader, which augments the ease of use from before, is that it's been around for quite a long time now. And so there's a plethora of information available in the forums and on the official blog. Both of them are quite well indexed by Google. So if you have some kind of error popping up, you can always Google it and chances are you'll find that someone else has had your problem and they've eventually posted a solution. If you do happen to be unlucky enough to find a problem that no one's ever had before, you might have a little wait because the forums aren't too active these days, so you might have to wait a couple of days for a response. Which brings us on to the main downside of Backtrader in my experience, which is that there's no longer any active development. So no new integrations with any new libraries that are coming up, any data feeds, any new formats for storing data, lots of other fancy things which we might want to add into a backtesting library. Ultimately, those aren't going to get added unless you decide to take it upon yourself and do it yourself. Backtrader can also be quite slow when running lots of different strategies or running lots of variations of the same strategy as basically the most efficient way to do it is to just loop over the different parameter combinations, which is gonna take a lot longer than if you were to do something similar in VectorBT. Speaking of VectorBT, the main benefit that I've experienced from VectorBT is the ridiculous speeds that you can get when doing your back tests. This is made possible because most of the underlying core components of VectorBT are compiled with number, which is a just-in-time compiler that converts Python code into machine code and makes everything a lot faster for you. It can be quite difficult to work with, but thankfully, Oleg's done all of that hard work for us 
and we can just use the nice interface that lets us run our back tests. The massive speed ups that you see are particularly pronounced when you're running lots of back tests, mainly because the time to compile the code using number is basically constant. And once it's compiled, you can run it over and over again very, very quickly. So if you're running a strategy hundreds of times with different parameter combinations, you'll more than likely experience a massive difference between the two libraries, or at least I have. And so with all this ridiculous speed that we're getting, there are a few drawbacks that you want to bear in mind. The main one being a lack of documentation. This is the thing I see the most people struggling with, with VectorBT. And with so many new features being added all the time, and with it being a relatively new library overall, there just hasn't been enough time for a large enough collection of Q and A's and tutorials and documentation to pile up to make it really easy to dig into. The author is currently producing a lot of new documentation, but it's exclusively aimed at the pro version of VectorBT, which brings us on to our second drawback. That being to get the best out of VectorBT, to get access to the newest and latest features and documentation, you'll need to sign up to the pro version. Now, as of the time I'm recording this video, it's pretty cheap to sign up, but that might be a barrier to some of you. As far as the differences go between the community version and the pro version, the pro version is the only one which has been actively developed with new features being added to it. The community or free version is just being maintained for bug fixes and all of the documentation beyond a basic API reference is written for the pro version and it might not be backwards compatible with the community version, especially as the two versions continue to diverge in the future. Personally, I wouldn't use the community version of VectorBT long term as I found that if I want to really understand how something works in the community version, I basically have to go and just read the code to figure out how it works. With the pro version, you also get access to a private Discord group with support either directly from the author or someone else who's had the same kind of problem. And you can search through the chat history and you'll usually find a solution for the problem that you're looking for. And that can be a great resource that I found is worth the price of the pro version on its own. In summary, if you're just looking to migrate from a proprietary trading platform like TradeStation, and you don't have a lot of programming experience, you might want to have a look at Backtrader or even its spiritual successor backtesting.py, which makes things even easier to use. If you've got a bit more programming experience and you're willing to pay and dedicate lots of time to getting the optimum speed and efficiency in your code and in your back tests, and you're willing to dive into the internals of this new library as it's being written, I'd go with VectorBT Pro as the overall most powerful backtesting tool that you can get your hands on as a retail trader in Python. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, if you need help with any of these backtesting frameworks, you can get in touch with me in the description below and I'll see you next time.